Well, good Friday afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I'm actually here in the man cave, and I'm getting ready for my trip to Cali because we're going back to Cali, to Cali, to Cali. We'll be there to practice on Monday, and it's Friday afternoon. Hope you guys tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, where we'll be talking about everything and all the updates with the Dallas Cowboys because it is on, man. It is on like Donkey Kong, and I just can't wait to get out there and see the team. I'm excited as can be about it and things in fact i'm actually here getting set up for uh everything that i need to do and i'm actually able to catch the mike mccarthy press conference going about to go off right now so i definitely want to hear what they have to say about our new assignees and if there's anything new on the contract situations after dak prescott kind of let them know i'm okay leaving let's go to the tape For a guy who's on the hot seat, he doesn't seem to be like he's too upset about it. All right, guys ready? I'm ready. All right, good morning. David? Good morning. morning. Mike, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit of your your thoughts on Tony and Muhammad and their additions and how how you bring them along? I think they really won't work into practice till kind of middle next week. Yeah, whatever. definitely. I mean, I think it's important to you know get them in there and see where they're at. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll kind of work them in. Uh, both had a good workout yesterday. I mean, it was it was pretty, you know, you know, standard workout this time of year. But uh, you know, these guys are you know will in the department have they've been in you know contact with. So um, so this was something that, frankly, that we were talking about before Sam's injuries. Mm-hmm. Okay. Clarence Hill, Fort Star Telegram. Can you give us an update on Kendrick's situation, his injury, and, and where he is? Yeah, I mean, he's dealing, dealing with, a, you know, a lower back. So um, I think he's going to give it a shot today. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see how, how, how it starts for him. Okay. Um, Mike Todd Archer with ESPN. With, with Dak, I don't, you probably don't even know that he would be in a contract here based on what he's done. Have you seen that kind of wear on guys in the past that put pressure on themselves in the contract here as Dak? different that way um yeah I, I i i can off you know just off the top of my head i don't re- recall you know um that is different I've definitely coach a lot of players in their contract year and I, I think it's really it's it's something that happens quite frankly or quite quite frank and freak frequently, frequently frankly so um i think it's important um that you know i think it's common is my point you know so i don't i don't think this is something that's just exclusive to to one quarterback. I mean, it, this goes on every single day for the majority of the employees in this league. Uh, John Mishow with The Athletic. What have you thought of Luke Schoonmaker and just how he's done coming back, yeah. how, you know, obviously dealing with a bunch of injuries? Uh, Luke's having a good camp. You know, I, I think just like anything, you, you really appreciate his skill set, especially when the pads come on. Um, I, you know, he's still growing in, in some of those areas but you know the, the ability to be an anchor you know on the line of scrimmage you know particularly with our new defense we're seeing a lot more six technique and nine technique and different things where obviously the importance of our, as far as responsibility and the run blocking for the tight ends has increased so uh, Luke is you know definitely one of our better guys there um, and I think he's done a really nice job in his route running I see improvements in his route running discipline in his stems you know not re- no not rushing his final step you know bigger windows using his you know using his body more so I think Luke's Luke's having a good camp and frankly just needs to stay healthy you know he's had some things bite him in the past and yeah, uh, so no he's doing well Calvin Watkins Dallas 20 News what's been the biggest improvement you've seen in Tolbert oh just uh, I just think you um, know Everything. Uh, I, I think he's just really completed his game. I, I think just like any young player that comes into the league, you know, in mm-hmm. his case particular, you know, he, after his rookie years, like, hey, I got to get stronger, you know, and and I got to play more physical. And and I'm not just talking run blocking. I'm talking about in his route running, you know, particularly when he gets to the top of his stem and the breaking point. So, yeah, I think JT's taking a big, big step, and um, he's one of those young men that. You know, he's in there every day. Uh, he's always looking for work. I mean, travel the country, uh, you know, in, in that off time. So does all the little things. And, he, you know, he's a true, you know, true professional. And had it, it, you know, and frankly arrived here with that. Um, so I can recall his rookie, his rookie training camp, you know, on off days, you know, l- looking for assistance and the detail in his note taking. I mean, he had a he had a notebook that was, you know, pristine in that area. So, I um, mean, now we're seeing the benefits of that.
Mm, okay. Thought you with the athletic. Mike, we've asked you a lot about Dak and Trey Lance, but Cooper Rush in the middle, like how have you seen him going about his business, the way that he's handled his job and responsibilities up? Cooper's so steady, so steady. Um, I, I just I've always loved that about him. Uh, he's the you know, personality wise is is exactly how he how he plays. And and I think it's a real credit when you see a veteran with the, with with that presence, you know that 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 confident, quiet presence that he brings, uh, and he steps in the huddle with the young guys, you know, an ability to talk through with the young guys, spend the time with the young guys. So, yeah, uh, super super consistent. Uh, obviously, extremely bright, knows the offense inside and out. But I think he's in a really good rhythm, you know, right now. And um, you know, frankly, I think this is the best shape I've seen him in, you know, physically. So you're seeing all the extra work that he's putting in has paid off difference between guys like Trey Lance, who is a young guy who might still have starter potential versus Cooper Rush, a veteran who's kind of locked into that backup role. Like, how, how do they approach practices in that way? How do they approach practice? I mean, they, I, they approach practice the same way. I mean, we, we, we all work together, uh, get ready for practice. They know their reps. Uh, Cooper's a great teammate that way with Trey. and. Um, yeah, so it's it's as is it's as as healthy as a quarterback room as you can have with those three personalities in there. Jeff Colt with Fox Four, uh, Mike. What impresses you most about the way that Tyler Smith, at 23 years old, handles his business, and how important <laughs> Tyler is, is the beast. changes on his left and right? This year? Well, just just watch his arrow as he's climbed up the ladder, um, and going back to his rookie year, you know, to to, to put him in the spot that we put him in. I mean, it was. Obviously, something I, I know I didn't prefer to do, um, you know, you know, having them split the reps pretty much between guard and tackle, uh, but it's something that we felt we wanted to do. Uh, I don't think you necessarily say needed, but I think it shows you what we thought of as maturity back then. Uh, you know, coming out of Tulsa, so for him to learn the two positions, and all, and, and frankly, the technique and that it wasn't always pretty, but I think the man. And you know his ability and his you know the, the spirit that he plays with and the physicality, you know, was able to push him through. So it's been really cool now to see him lock in and uh, play one position. You know, and he and he plays at a very high level. Uh, but he's like no, he's human too. He's like all of our offensive linemen right now. Our pads are too high, and you know we we need to get the fits tighter. And you know, so that's you know that's normal week one stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I I think Ty is going to be a, a top level great player in this league for a long time. Patrick Walker, DallasCowboys.com. Circling back to the tight ends, outside of Jake and Luke, um, you guys are getting back John Stevens Jr. You have Peyton Hendershot, at Alec Holler, Brevin Span. Ford, you got a lot of Captain tight ends Span. right now. Can you talk about how the competition is is going behind Schoonmaker and Ferguson? And is there anyone that's jumped out? Already? Well, they all have. No, I do. That's a really, really good, deep, you know, young group. I mean, there's. I mean, all those guys will play in the league, in my opinion. You know, and I, I think when you project young players like that, you can get out in front of yourself. But no, that's that's that group is going to be fun to watch. Uh, and then, you know, we always got to talk about special teams when we when we, we talk about those guys because that particular body type you can't have enough of on special teams. So yeah, I mean, we can go through each guy. I mean, I, th I think they've all. You know, we do the, we do a, a video. Um, you know just reminders and things and when we get together as a group in the perimeter and you know all those guys are on those tapes and I you know that's not normal to see young players make that tape so I mean John's done some really good things Princeton's you know particularly once we put the pads on that's where you know his game comes comes to light a little more and you know the young cats are smart smart instinctive players so I do want to see more padded work but those guys are, are doing a really nice job it's going to be it's a very competitive room Mike does the WFA Coach, have you seen the the battle at the center position between Hoffman and BB? How, how is the rookie doing, and where do you evaluate? Yeah, that? I, I tell you, you got three centers in there that are doing a really nice job, and you, you know Dakota's. I, I thought is uh, you know getting his first real full time opportunity. You know he, he's come to us before in the middle of the season, and, and so now he's been able to go from start to finish. Uh, so uh, I really like what all three of them are doing. You know, I think just the first thing is you got to command it. Uh, you know, you got to have command of the, you know, of, of the declarations. So, you know, they get things started. Obviously, this, the quarterback center exchange, which was a little bit of an issue in the spring, uh, is clearly much better. So I, I think that part of it, the operation, has been good. We're getting great work against Mike Zimmer and the defense, just particularly with the, you know, schematic challenge there. Uh, so that's been really good, full speed and the timing of it. So we're off to a good start. But yeah, just I think, just like I said earlier, with. You know Tyler Smith and our, you know our guys need to work. You know we we need pass rush every day. We need nine oh seven every day. We need to we need to padded work. So we we all we all have work to do there. All three of those guys. 
guy like BB as a rookie, like you're saying, the yeah. declarations and the understanding of what he's looking at from the defensive front, how much can he lean on Dak for some of that? Is there a, like, I know when Dak was younger, he was able to lean a little bit on Travis Frederick in the other direction. Can it kind of go in the other? No, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, it's just the way we do it here. Um, they lean on, you know, they lean on everybody. I mean, we, that's all we talk about. There's, there's not a team presentation that, or team meeting doesn't happen without a presentation that refers to cross the hall. I mean, we got to help each other all the way through. Not, you know, offensive, defense, you know, veteran, the rookie. That's a big part of how we operate, especially in this teaching realm and training camp. I mean, this is where you you have to have it. This is the only time we're all together. You know, uh, where this is our most pure football opportunity of the of the year. You know, regardless of how far you go, uh, so you got to take advantage of it. Yeah. So to answer your question specifically, everybody's helping everybody, and uh, and Cooper's a sponge. He's got that kind of personality, and and he's getting better. Brad, did you? Have I, I do. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. Sham yeah. Cowboys Radio, staying in the offensive line. <clears throat> Mike, uh, second year for Awesome Richards. He yeah. Worked uh, inside and out. We'll talk about his development. Yeah, I think, you know, looking at him last year, loved his athletic ability. You can see the foot speed and the quickness right away, uh, just his react. Uh, but, had, you know, had to get stronger, had to get anchor. He's definitely taking a big step there in the weight room, and it's been nice because it has transferred to the field. So, um, once again, doing a lot of great things. I'm trying not to say the same thing, but everybody's doing a hell of a job. He's doing a great job. Everybody's doing a great job. So, uh, but, no, it's, you know, but this is where we are, though. You know, it's, you know, he needs, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and say we've got to figure it out because, you know, if you, you watch closely, we got, we got a lot of work inside and those guys are you know have the biggest challenge because uh you know they, they don't get to work with pads in the off season and so forth where the perimeter guys are clearly further ahead than our interior guys dan greenspan associate press uh my coffin game last night was the first look at the new kickoff rules seemed pretty vanilla everybody trying to hold their cards do you think the joint practices will will maybe give a little bit better look and how those things are going to play out? Or again, will everybody be kind of cautious? To well, I just, I mean, when you look at the joint practices, I mean, you know, how many reps you're really going to get, you know, but yeah, you're going to, you're going to work it. Um, so you'll probably Can't see more see that. in the joint practices because how many were there last night too? Yeah, so I mean, you're going to get, you're going to get more, more work there. But yeah, that'll give you a, a clearer indication. Yes. Uh, uh, Mike, with, with Guyton, you drafted him, he immediately moved up. Uh, he said he didn't take a vacation after minicamp, but stayed mm -hmm. around and worked out. Did you guys know that? Is that a seriousness of approach that you knew of uh, when, when you? Yeah, took definitely. Him? I just you know one, one thing I recall, and, and and Will could probably speak on it in more detail than than myself is, you know, the position coach, and then you know Mike Solari's visit up there uh, to Oklahoma, and it just a you know a consistent message of, you know, how they felt that you know his his preparation this year was top notch and. You know, and you look for that maturity in in those prospects, and and, and you know, you rely on you know uh, opinions of others here. But so, yeah, that was definitely something that was I, I know was mentioned in the reports. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Obviously, it's early. I know everybody's got to get better yeah. and all that. But have, have you seen that his diligence kind of pay off a little bit here, and and how he's improved from when? with the, the first OTAs when he got here till till now? Yeah, definitely. I, I think he's taken a, a big step. Um, you know, he does have a. A, a very naturalness to him, you know, as far as his understanding of football. So he's, it's definitely, you know, it, you know, it, it, that has not been an issue at all. Uh, has really good recall. Uh, so uh, that's important. You know, it's something that you always look for in your classroom environment when you're when you're teaching these guys the recall. He, he does have, have has good recall for a young young player. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think he has any restrictions. And you know, just like you know, every lineman we've talked about, he, he needs he needs a padded work. Mm -hmm. Zimmer's been known as a tough disciplinary coach, you know, in the past. Uh, does he still have that edge? Have you seen that play out? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think just like anything, um, you know, when you talk about, you know, Mike Zimmer or, or guys that have coached in this league, you know, through generations, you know, there's definitely a consistency there in, in how he goes about it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think, you know, we all recognize things are a little different today than they were 20 years ago. Uh, but, no, he's, he, he's definitely, that's, that's, that's who he is at the core. Today, they, you know, obviously it's a different change, different personality style yeah. from 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 Dan. Yeah, it was, and, and that was by design. You know, you know, Dan did a great job here. Uh, you know, without a doubt, and had his had his style, and you know, and his, you know, he had his superpowers that you know that definitely was reflected mm -hmm. in how we played on defense, and and you know, and had some excellent defenses here. So you know, now it's that's why it was important. You know, with. With us, you know, with with the opportunity with Mike is to clearly give him the clear 
slate. You know, and that's something that, you know, when I, I just you look back at experiences in the past, and um, you know, even if we call the same thing something different, so I mean, it's his language. <laughs> It's got to come out of his, you know, out of his mouth clean. The adjustments, the history of those adjustments, uh, you know, how the approaches particularly, you can see. Um, and I think it's a hell of a job when you recognize, you know, you look at an offensive defensive system that goes into spring and you're able to get into your second or first padded practice and have some game-like situations. Mm -hmm. and, and we've been creating that for each other, you know, and that's that's been super cool because you, you normally don't usually get that to later in the later installs, you know, seven, eight, and then the bonus practices, and we're getting it right now. So I think it, it, that'll benef benefit all of us. And that's a real credit to Mike and the staff and the players uh, to get to that point as quick as they have. Dave. Mike, uh, Dak was already into his career when, when you got here. And and other than just the, the evolution of a quarterback and understanding the game better, is there anything about what part of his game or parts do you feel he's improved most in your time here? I think he's improved in, in most most all of the all the areas, and that's what I really appreciate about him. He's always working on his game. I mean, you can break it down in the pocket and out of the pocket. I mean, you look at look at his footwork, uh, just some you know the adjustments from you know the system before to now, and, and some of the, the new footworks that. Uh, or just the emphasis of particular footworks over, you know, what he's done in the past. He really likes um, that. He's, he's done a really good job with that. You know, I, I look at his his flexibility, you know, in the shoulders and elbows, and, you know, I think his, you know, his his partner, Luke Wilson there, you know, it's PT that work, works with him, is, uh, does a phenomenal job there. The flexibility, you can see the different arm slots, throws that he, that he does on a daily basis. So, I, you know, I see some improvement there than, you know, 2020. Um, but yeah, the understanding of the offense. He's, I mean, he's just going to keep getting better. I mean, he's just going to keep getting better and better as he, he goes through these constant reps of the same concepts and take them to the variations and uh, love them in the classroom. Love that. Love the whole classroom environment. It's that, that, that's incredible. So he's a, you know, he's a sponge. Can't get enough. And uh, frankly, if, if he does anything wrong, he probably does a little bit too much away from here, you know, because he just he's always working on his game. So I, I think he's a guy that's always looking to improve, and, and you're seeing it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. There we go. All right. So a couple of things I'm going to say here is, would it be a surprise, surprise if the Cowboys were to blow it up? If Mike McCarthy was fired, that Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott could team up elsewhere? Is, is Am I crazy on that idea? Maybe, maybe I am crazy on that one. But I think Dak Prescott really likes working with Mike McCarthy, and I think that's a two-way street that I think is actually a great dynamic. You see what Dak Prescott did last year. In the first four games, it took him time to get used to the Texas Coast offense, but they were literally on a tear. And if Mike McCarthy could get an ownership that would do like the 49ers or uh, the Eagles and actually be all in besides all in talking, that um, maybe, maybe just maybe, he'd win another one. You know, as much as people have been killing the Cowboys for years of lack of off-season off moves and bringing in free agents, the Cowboys are still up there. I know everybody's talking about we're not winning Super Bowls and things, but I have to say, I don't see the Eagles have not won a Super Bowl either. Buffalo has not won a Super Bowl either. Lord knows the Jets have spent a boatload of money, ain't even sniffed the playoffs, but yet they're still there playing well. Just imagine if they actually went all in. A couple of things. Um, Eric Kendrick is going to try and give it a go today with the sore back. That's not a good thing. Uh, Shoemaker is definitely beginning to turn some heads. And at, at the moment, as Mike McCarthy put it, that he's staying healthy, which is helping. Jalen Tolbert has gotten stronger and has really worked on his route running. And what I would like to see is, you know, Jalen Tolbert, First year was a disaster. Last year, in the opportunities that he had, he actually played better than Michael Gallup, but didn't get the opportunities because the Cowboys were trying to uh, justify the cost that they spent on Michael Gallup. They had to use him, and it was a disaster. Had they not spent the money on Michael Gallup, and they would have let him go, and I think Jalen Tolbert would have gotten a lot more experience. But you definitely see the maturation of him. Um, if we could see that same kind of step up 
from Schoonmaker, that would help us tremendously. But we do have a deep tight end room, and I hope to see a lot more of 12 personnel would be fantastic because you know how I love 12 personnel is very personal to me, uh, yeah, so to speak. All right, good people. It's going to be a busy, busy day, and you know, get, get, get ready to get sick and tired of seeing me. Get sick and tired of seeing me. I have to go over at some point and take care of a breaker for my mother uh, for a garage and things and get uh, things packed. But from here on out, 